All right, let's talk about slow WooCommerce websites. So these are in a bit of a different category to a typical WordPress website and a little bit different to your typical WordPress speed issues. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why. Number one is WooCommerce sites are much more sensitive to speed. So because it's e-commerce and because people are buying online, a slow WooCommerce site is in particular going to hurt your conversion rate and your bottom line. So it's even more important that your WooCommerce site is loading lightning fast. Now there's a handful of things you can do to speed it up or really there's a handful of reasons why it's slow. So let's look at look at those, um, you know, let's look at the, the top issues. You'll see a lot of stuff around the web that really digs into some really technical stuff and really small and little kind of technical tweaking. But usually that doesn't really affect speed too much. There's usually a couple of core reasons why it's slow. So the biggest reason why your WooCommerce site is slow is because it's on bad hosting. So WooCommerce is very resource heavy, so it needs a lot of processing power in order to load fast. I mean, it's doing a lot in the back end. It's dealing with a lot of orders. Typically, the website database is a lot bigger, especially if you're getting a lot of orders. So if you're getting, you know, even as, as few as 10 orders a day, then you're really going to need some decent performing hosting. Um, so a lot of people are trying to get away with, you know, five or ten dollar a month hosting. It's just not good enough to have a WooCommerce site loading fast. So there's three hosts that we use primarily. So WP Engine, it's probably the best for a, um, a best the best fit for a WooCommerce site because it's a managed WordPress host and they take care of patching, they take care of backups, they have a staging area. So in particular, when you're doing WooCommerce plugin updates you can use the staging area to make a copy of the website and test the updates there first um, and make sure nothing breaks so you know if, if you're anything like the WooCommerce sites that we look after that you might have 10 20 or even 30 WooCommerce related plugins so it's important that you have a test area to test those updates before you push them live so WP Engine is one WPX is another managed hosting provider it has uh, quite a few less features than WP Engine so it's a bit cheaper that would probably probably be my second recommendation and then the third one would probably probably be cloudways now cloudways is really a vps um, host provider so a dedicated server um, it's a little less managed than the other two so it's a lot more technical now it's probably a better solution for a really big site um, uh, it is going to be cheaper than WP Engine or WPX when you get into, you know, big site with, you know, we're talking 50 or 100 orders a day, but then you are going to need someone to manage it. Um, and then probably the fourth one um, coming in last place would be SiteGround, but I'd say SiteGround would be the absolute bare minimum. Like you would only get away with SiteGround if you had a handful of orders a day. Anything more than that, it's just not going to have enough performance to handle um, you know, what WooCommerce needs in terms of CPU power and processing power and what it does in the back end. Um, now, there are some hosts that we know for 100% are slow and you should never use when um, you have WooCommerce sites. So those are, those are hosts like Bluehost, HostGator, GoDaddy, Site5. In Australia, so we're an Australian company, so in Australia, Crazy Domains, Net Registry, Melbourne IT, they're all dirt cheap hosts. I mean, it's like five bucks a month for hosting, and the way they make money is they stack 10,000 other websites on the same server, and they all compete for um, resources, and there's just not enough to go around. So I'd be wary of any of those hosts. And then if you are in one of those hosts, quite often if the site's going slow, they will upgrade you to a dedicated server, but you're still on you know, you still were the bad host effectively. That's like having the premium option in the $2 store. You're still inside the $2 store. So it's just never going to be good enough for a WooCommerce site. So, you know, WooCommerce in particular, you're going to have to spend money on the hosting. Like it's just not, you're not going to get away with 5 or $10 a month hosting. It just doesn't make sense. And, it, it, you know, these cheap hosts have kind of trained the industry to think that hosting, all hosting costs is 10 or 20 bucks a month, which is not the case. And, you know, if you're spending money on ads, you know, you're spending thousands of dollars a month on Google shopping ads or AdWords or Facebook ads, then it makes sense not to scrimp on the hosting. Like don't save money. It's kind of, you know, false economy, saving money in the hosting, but it's going to cost you in terms of conversions and sales. So uh, hosting, you know, if you only looked at the hosting performance, you would probably solve if you have a... a speed problem right now you would probably solve that just by moving to better hosting now the other two things to look at is to use caching so um, you cannot run wordpress without caching so if, you know in a nutshell caching 
pre-builds the pages so all the thinking is done all the processing to build that page is done by the time a visitor hits the website so um, there are two caching plugins we use so okay so when the, the visitor hits the website the page is already built so it's saved it's served up really quickly so none of that processing really needs to happen only a small amount of processing processing so there's two caching plugins we use for WordPress so one is w, W3 Total Cache. Now it's the fastest caching plugin and it's free, but it's very technical to set up. So it's probably not wise to use that if you're DIYing. If you're DIYing, WP Rocket is nearly as fast as W3 Total Cache, but it's much more DIY friendly and much less technical. So if you're not very tech savvy or don't really have developer resources, that is probably the one to look at instead of W3 Total Cache. Now some hosts have caching built in, so WP Engine has caching built in already, which is one of the reasons why it is fast and probably better if you have a WooCommerce site. So before installing a caching plugin, it's probably wise to check and make sure your host doesn't already have caching. Uh, okay, so we've got two other things on the list. Well, we've got three others. One is to use Cloudflare. So Cloudflare is a content delivery network and a website acceleration service that sits in front of your website and just generally makes things faster. So it will take some of the load off your web host so it will serve up some of the files off their servers instead of loading it off your hosting provider so it kind of alleviates the load by around 30 percent on your web host um, because it's a content delivery network they have hundreds more than 100 locations around the world so particularly if you're serving an international audience cloudflare is definitely one to look at and in most cases the free plan is all you need if you have a bigger website or an image heavy website it might be worth looking at the paid plan because they do some fancy things with image compression with security and a few other things to make it even faster so um you know it's free the base plan is free uh it does a whole lot to speed up your website and it has a basic firewall so it will protect you from a lot of low level poor quality traffic so um absolute no-brainer and a lot of the time that um, cloudflare is built into your hosting provider you'll probably see an option in your cpanel to turn it on so if you have that that's an easy way to get it implemented so two other things one um, is to switch to https so secure mode um, or ssl now um, if you have a checkout i'm guessing you already have an ssl certificate installed one of the big reasons from a speed perspective to use SSL is that it enables visitors to use the HTTP2 protocol. Now I'll include a video um, that shows you the speed difference between the HTTP2 protocol versus the HTTP version 1.1 protocol. Um, there is a speed, big speed difference between the two and you need an SSL certificate and the site to be running in HTTPS mode all the time in order to use that your protocol and your host needs to support it. So most good hosts will typically shared hosts like Bluehost and HostGator don't. So that's another reason not to use them. But effectively what it does in a nutshell with the old protocol, so version 1.1, say you had 100 things on your web page or homepage to download, that was 100 connections that the web browser software needed to make to the server in order to download those. So that's 100 connections. With the version 2 protocol, it can download them all with one, one connection. So that's 99 less connections. So as you can imagine, that's a lot less network overhead and just generally makes things much more snappy. So there's a video there I will include in the post that makes that really demonstrates the difference between the, the old protocol and the new one. And the last big recommendation would be to use PHP 7 instead of PHP 5.6. So PHP is the programming language that WordPress and WooCommerce is built upon. So it runs on top of PHP. Now the old version was 5.6. The new version, PHP 7, there's 7.1 and 7.2, but um, 7 is where you need to be at uh, at a minimum really. So version 7 is roughly two to three times faster than the old version 5.6 which equates to a roughly 30% speed increase on the front of the website. And then on the back end, when you're running reports and things like that, or loading like lists of orders, if you're in the orders page or messing around with orders, updating orders, it'll also make things faster there. So it'll equate to about a 30% increase on the front end and the back end. And some orders, some reporting will actually run a lot faster. So there is a, before you make the switch, you need to make sure all your plugins are compatible. So I'll include a link to a, PHP compatibility checker that's provided by WP Engine but you can use it on any WordPress site on any host so what that will do it'll go through 
your plugins and check to make sure your plugins at theme are all PHP 7 compatible. And usually it will throw up some errors. So you might get, you know, two out of 10 or, you know, four out of 20 plugins that have some sort of warning. So then we would go and manually check those plugins and just check to confirm that those plugins are PHP 7 compatible because the automated check isn't 100% perfect. So it might detect some errors or warnings. So we manually go and check them. And if they're all good, then uh, we make the switch. So you can make the switch inside your hosting control panel or your C panel. It's fairly easy to do and you should see an immediate speed increase. So that's pretty straightforward. There's some other things there, um, compressing images. We use WP Smush plugin to compress images. So that's really easy. Um, and just disabling any plugins you're not using, particularly with WooCommerce, you'll get some plugin bloat where the plug that you just have a whole bunch of plugins and you're not necessarily using them all. So doing a plugin inventory and making sure you're using them all and disabling any that are not being used will probably help as well. Each plugin, you know, is going to require server resources and, and CPU power in order to load. So uh, that's another one just worth doing and worth doing regularly as well. Um, so that's pretty much it for WooCommerce. If you get those things nailed, um, particularly, you know, moving to a quality host, then you'll likely solve your WooCommerce speed problems. Um, we also have a service called WP Speed Fix if you want us to take care of it. So WPSpeedFix.com. So we can optimize your site on your existing host or we can also move the host for you. There's a couple of options there. So if you don't want to DIY it, then that'll be worth checking out. So WPSpeedFix.com.